Well, blessed Thursday to you as we come to you through daily encouragement. And uh, we are at uh, page 67 on the Day with Others, the second section of Dietrich Bonhoeffer's Life Together. And we're talking about reorienting our understanding of being at table, thanking God not just for the gifts which God gives us, but the gift of Jesus Christ being the Word of God and why it is important for us to reorient ourselves with that. And so the second idea that he wants to express is this. The second, the fellowship acknowledges that all earthly gifts are given to it only for Christ's sake as this whole world is sustained only for the sake of Jesus Christ, his word and his message. He is the true bread of life, and he is not only the giver, but the gift itself, for those who, for whose sake all earthly gifts exist. Only because the message concerning Jesus Christ must still go forth and find believers, and because our task is not yet perfected, does God in his presence continue to sustain us with his good gifts? So the Christian Table Fellowship prays in Luther's words, O Lord God, Heavenly Father, bless unto these thy gifts, which thy tender kindness thou hast bestowed upon us through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thus confessing that Jesus Christ is divine mediator and savior. Now, maybe the one that might strike you is that all these gifts are sustained for the sake of Jesus Christ. What might say, if we're saying from a human's perspective, aren't they to be sustained for the sake of the world? Sustained for the sake of maybe even the created world, humanity, or some other larger gifts? Doesn't it seem a little egocentric to say that everything is sustained and, should I say, focused on Jesus Christ? And, of course, the question might say, isn't that putting Christ too much of importance on Christ? Don't we want to just say, for the sake of creation, for the sake of others? Well, the reason is, is because Jesus Christ is the gift of God, but he's also the purpose of God. And what is the purpose of God? To show how we are to live and love and move in this life. If Jesus is the example, if not the embodiment of perfect humanity. Why not perfect whatever animal? Well, un under the idea the fall of humanity from Adam and Eve, we had to remember that it is only humans that fell from grace. And so it is incumbent upon the gift of God to reorient humans once again. And so God does that through the sustenance, the eating of the bread, which is the body of Christ, and for the sake of the body of Christ. Now, all the other things that maybe we have concerns about will find their meaning and purpose in Jesus Christ, such as loving others, taking care of God's creation, taking care of the next generation, taking care of, um, you name the, the topic, we probably would find our purpose and meaning in Jesus Christ. And it, maybe you could say that maybe God has created me and others for a special purpose in this life. And all those can find their hope and empowerment and meeting if we emulate Jesus Christ, who will give us the power to do the things specifically created by you and I to do. So don't view this as necessarily uh, either or in the sense of either I serve Jesus Christ and I don't get to do the thing that I'm wired or created to do. No, view it as Jesus as the sustenance, Jesus as the center of our existence. As we said earlier, if Jesus is the sound, if Jesus is the word that keeps our reality together, we need to have more of Jesus in order for us to have 
a more harmonious, if not balanced, reality. We need to have more of Jesus Christ. And so it is incumbent upon us to make sure that we do everything for Christ's sake. Now, if we are a little bit critical of our faith for just a second, we need to understand the danger of that, according to some of even our brotherly brothers and sisters in Abrahamic faith, such as our Muslim friends, if not our Jewish friends. Because their argument is simply that we have elevated one human person and put them at the center of all of reality. We've elevated this one human person and said that they are the premier example of all that we ought to do and say. And the Christian should simply say yes. And that is because Jesus Christ is God incarnate. And because Jesus Christ is God incarnate, Jesus Christ is ultimate purpose incarnate and shows us how to live when we have fallen short of how to live, when we have gone our different ways in how to live. And so it is incumbent upon us to make sure that we are imitators of Jesus Christ. And, and so the challenge is, yes, we can say to a Muslim inquirer, and to a, a, a Jewish inquirer. Yes, I, from some point of view, Jesus might be considered an idolatry, uh, an idolatry to elevate him up, but what if he is God? And what if he is the ultimate gift of humanity? As we have said from anchoring in John 3.16, his only begotten son. And so then it is important not that we are worried about idolatry, but that we are worried about missing out on the greatest gift, the greatest empowerment, the greatest reality of all that has been created. And so we have to acknowledge that there is a tension, that there is a choice that needs to be made. And Dietrich, uh, it wasn't so much Dietrich Bonhoeffer, I'm going to quote C.S. Lewis, C.S. Lewis uh, said this in his Mere Christianity. There's no uh, think a thing about elevating Jesus as just the greatest prophet or the greatest human. He said he's either a liar, that he's deceiving us. He's either a lunatic, thinking he is something more than he is, or he is God. And so that is still a choice that we had to consider. And Dietrich Bonhoeffer here does not mince any words. It is Jesus who is the ultimate gift of life. And Jesus, and it is for the sake of Jesus that all gifts are given so that we can serve the mission of Jesus in and through the gifts of life. God bless you today. We trust that these continue to be words of encouragement. Take care. We'll see you tomorrow.